uh, guest um, of the new series that we decide to call with Christine the TP Friends uh, with a new name. Uh, we, we discussed uh, one hour ago and said, okay, we'll sleep on it for one day. But one hour ago, <laughs> one hour later, we decide. Okay, okay so that's, it's not the TP Talk, it's a TP Friends. That's the name of the thing. Okay. On the idea, it's uh, to be together. Uh, the first was not officially the, the one, was with Neil. Neil Semeho was with us to discuss about life. The second one was, was with Jeremy, a little more formal. But actually, this one is probably the first under the real name, the TP Friends. Mm. So it's in two parts. The, the first <laughs> part, Laura will present something, a project. On the second part, uh, I will ask the questions that everybody uh, put on the base camp uh, the other day. And um, everyone is able to uh, obviously uh, interrupt, ask questions, and maybe uh, do comments uh, via the, the chat on Zoom. It can be also useful to use a chat on Zoom to, to ask some questions for later or something like that. But please uh, enjoy and uh, uh, cut your microphone when uh, Laura is speaking and open up when it's necessary. I hope everybody um, is still alive. It seems so on screen. <laughs> we have to joke about that, you know. You know, on the beginning, we are, we are always saying, okay, that as your family is okay and nobody is suffering, but let's make joke about, about such thing now. Yeah, yeah, that's better. Yeah. Okay, so everybody is happy. So Laura, uh, it's the second yeah. time we have you at Thai Paris. Uh, you came from Barcelona. We meet each other probably in Barcelona or, be or before, I don't recall. It was at Thai Pai. Does it was yeah. in Belgium or in Barcelona? I think it was in, in Lisbon. I think it was in Lisbon. Lisbon. I mean, yeah, maybe we... you were in Barcelona 1995. You were in a Taipei 1995. Yeah. Yes. And it was my first Taipei as I was still uh, playing with letters. I had no idea what I was doing with type anyway. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, but I, I, don't think, I don't think anybody you... introduced us. I don't remember that. I recall of you in 95. I recall of you. Me? Ah, yeah, yeah. Well, perfectly. because we had an exhibition in 1995. It was very interesting because we had an exhibition about the Thai design, Spanish Thai design scene. And yeah. because people from Thai Pai requested to do it. And at that time, you know, like, okay, is this something that we can make an exhibition of it? <laughs> because mm -hmm. we were really uh, starting, you know, and so we were one of the typotons. We were one of the few that were there mm, as an exhibition. But in 1995, we already started in 1991, 1992. So we had yeah. uh, very few typefaces, and everything was really amateur. So later, I remember we, I, I went to uh, after 1995. I only came back to a Taipei in 2003 to Rome um, and then after this I have been joining it as much as possible but uh, now uh, because I'm part of the board so I'm going to you but, uh, not this so year. please present yourself and start <laughs> you know, as uh, anytime present yourself and start anytime you already do it so please continue yeah, yeah. yeah. okay so you want me to start introducing what I prepare for you You want me to do this? So I will, uh, yeah. I will share the screen already, okay? Yeah. Yes. The yes, sound yes. is a bit bad now. The communication yes. is okay. So yeah, I will yeah. share it, okay? So um, let me start with this. Uh, it's a little slow. So mm -hmm. you have, uh, I may have some problems with that. Let me, let me share my screen first. Yeah. Now I lost you. Where are you? <laughs> I don't see you anymore. Okay, this is the problems of the live <laughs> show. <laughs> uh, okay, I lost you completely. Now it's back. Okay, I'm going to share my screen. Okay, I'm going to start with this part. Wow. That is okay. So, Francois asked me to talk about something. 
And then I thought, okay, what am I going to talk about, you know? So I, I had to confess that I didn't know I had to talk. <laughs> so what I decided to do is to prepare a tiny presentation about the typeface I'm working now that is called Sisters. So everything started with this leaflet on the left. It's, it's a leaflet I found in the FLIA market here. It's uh, the book FLIA market in the school at San Ignacio. And it's a booklet about a school. So this is a booklet that was, I mean, it's not, I cannot find the print, the, the year of the printing in the leaflet, but I assume that it's uh, something more related to the forties, beginnings of fifties because of the way, the kind of, uh, of uh, photos, etc. So here on the right, you see one spread of this uh, catalog and you see the lettering on top, Catechismos. Uh, then I was browsing this leaflet in, the, in this uh, market and then I decided mm -hmm. to take it home. And then later, when I, I have it at home, I discovered that it was super cool. So I saw this. So you can see the detail in the world football where these letters are done by pieces. Can you see the detail there? So, and I thought, okay, this is something. I'm very fond of uh, stencil typefaces. I always been. And actually I use stencil uh, type design workshop as a, as a starter, starter workshop, starter workshop people, people. So then I discovered I letters and then at that time I was working on the design of an exhibition in another city of Catalonia in Lleida. And then I thought I could do something from this, for this exhibition. In this exhibition, it's a, it's a cultural center called La Panera in, in Lleida. And I had to do the graphic design for an exhibition of two people together. And then I thought maybe I could draw letters on purpose for this exhibition because I was really fascinated by this uh, leaflet. And then I developed this concept of two people sharing things. And I create this sort of weird letters where a letter, for instance, letter M is only one, but letter A has a double horizontal bar because it, we are talking about conceptual art. And they like it a lot. And then I design all the letters I need for this purpose. But then later, they also invite me to, to give a workshop for kids in Christmas. And then I use the same typeface for that. And then I, I work on these visuals that are more for kids because it was a, a collage. It was a workshop of two hours for kids, kids from five till uh, 11 years old. And it was super, super funny. And I started to play with the letters and discovering things around this. And then it was the starting point for doing something with it. So then I decided to create a typeface from that and use it in more wider for the museum, for the art, cultural art center. And then I developed this system of only doing some parts of letters and trying to develop a system with uh, only few parts of letters. So then it happened that I had to do the workshop in New York for the Thai Directors Club in June, uh, in June, in January. I can't believe now that I was in New York in, June, in January. <laughs> you know, it's like, uh, it seems like I was in New York ages ago and it was only two months ago. But I'm very happy I went there and then I developed this idea for the workshop. And I started to just work on the system, developing more and more letters. And then later I was creating also some uh, visuals for promoting the workshop. And then I did this, uh, hello? Okay. I did this, this, uh, animated gift for the workshop. So I started to see the potential for, for a, a typeface family. And this is how I started the concept. So then I put everything like in order because I have a quite messy document at the moment. And then I started to create this system. So this is the basics. And later I also was very interested on this feeling that this typeface could have uh, some alternates in terms of construction. So here in the bottom, you can see the alternates from the top. So I have an A, actually, by the way, this is only capitals. There's no lowercase in this uh, family because uh, I want to be very faithful to the origin of the, of the typeface. So you see in the bottom that I create some alternates from a specific characters like a capital A, capital C, the D, the G, the O. 
but there's a reason. Only those characters who have a different way of expressing the round shape, I decided to do um, an alternate, and then so much matching shapes for, for the A and the O and the U, and then I had all the vocals, all the vowels, sorry. So this is how I started, and then I thought about the idea of creating a system. So from one that is the, the lightest one, then I just, just by uh, making thicker some of the parts, I create another system, and then the third system is the like equalizing the, width, the thickness, and then the fourth is based on the second one and is more like a decorative, deco, etc. So then I started to play with it, like combination of them. So the way I was working with this typeface, it was uh, very plastic in a way. So I was working with them, always making words and working with compositions because it's a display typeface. So I thought how it works, how does it behave when you combine them? How does it behave when you create a visuals with it alone? No? Um, and then I was invited to give this workshop in, uh, in Copenhagen. So I was also in Denmark <laughs> this year, in March. So I'm very happy. I was in, in a rush, everything happened very fast. And then I did these this postcards to give to, to the attendees on the workshop. And everybody was super happy. Then I had a very good feedback on, on, on the typeface. So everybody told me, yeah, you have to develop it and you have to, to finish it. And I am now I'm working on the specimen already. And I'm working with a designer who is a friend of mine. And he's super good doing uh, like icons and illustrations. So he's helping me to do the visuals for, for the release of the typeface with typotons, of course. And I'm pretty happy. I mean, for me, it's an exercise that is a, it's a bit, uh, it's a lot of things. I mean, it's something that I'm developing for real in the quarantine. So I could put all the time I needed to, to push it, but it's really interesting. And then also asking people to, to give me an opinion. Because I don't know about you, but my first weeks of quarantine, I was feeling really out of place. And I have this feeling that I really need to talk to people all the time. <laughs> so I was uh, communicating with people all the time, like uh, no rest. And then I was, I was sharing this project with a lot of people. And this is how my friend uh, Gerard, he offered himself to do visuals. And then I was looking for the name, you know, that uh, the name of a typeface is very difficult. And then I sent this to a friend of mine, a city designer living in the, in the Basque country, either. And then it was in coincidence with, uh, uh, with this, it was after actually, the 8th of March and all this, uh, the, the, the feminist strike, etc. And then they, she told me, okay, so you have four faces, they are related to each other. I would call it sisters. So sisters because they are related and sisters because I always put a feminine name to my typefaces. I have this feeling that typefaces are female. <laughs> so I try to put a feminine and female names to typefaces. And this is why it's called sister because she thought okay, this is also something that is related to feminism and activism. So here, for instance, in this image, you see um, the name of uh, women that are uh, feminists. And in music and in literature, so this is the concept we are working with Gerard for the visuals of the typeface, you know. Um, I don't have much more to say about this. Just to have a last image that is uh, something I'm playing with now. That is how I'm very happy to see how the typeface behaves with different sizes. And I think I'm pretty happy about it. It's, a, it's more like an exercise for me. It's something that I'm working pretty fast. Um, yeah. So. I don't know if you have anything else to ask. Here I have uh, all the Eclipse documents of the typeface. So I did it uh, really, really, I mean, it's a Latin plus, actually. I decided to develop Latin plus because why not? 
And also I find it quite interesting to work with the diacritics when you work in a stencil typeface. I have uh, quite a lot of fun with that. So this is my presentation. I don't know if you have any question specific about sisters. I know I'm a bit fast maybe, but uh, yeah. I can listen to you. Uh, yes. of, of course, okay. I would like to see the, 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 the hey, glyphs file much closer, right? <laughs> so that's just uh, me. Uh, Laura, Laura, the first question about Trochu. Uh, the, 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 the typeface from Trochu, uh, published in the 50s. Super tipo veloz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could you say something on uh, if there is a connection or no connection or or if you want to escape of that completely, because on your source, we feel uh, there is something similar, just on the source. Not what are you doing, but on the source you show to us. Yeah, So maybe actually, you can say something about that or, or not, I look, don't know. This is, the, I mean, Novadam, the Novadam books by Trochu are much, are a bit, it's in the 40s as well. So it's a contemporary thing. I'm not sure about exactly the date of Novadam now, I should look for it, but here is the leaflet I was showing the image. So this is the, the leaflet I found in the market. And mm -hmm. what I find in this is, besides the all the imagery, is the, how they are working for, with the sans serif typefaces in a very interesting way, actually. Um, and it's quite modern, you see, the layout. It's, it's really modern. I mean, if you see this now, I mean, yes. yeah, yeah. it's not, the goal of this typeface is that it's something that is based based on something that is a bit. Um, we cannot see you only our screen. Is what I'm saying. So yeah, Laura, if you want to see, if you want to okay. share. Okay, the... you want me to stop. Well, then yeah. we'll okay. see what you're showing. Okay, yeah. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. It's confusing. <laughs> so then I should start sharing. Yes. So you see me now. Wait. You see me now? Um, you, now we do, yes. Okay, yeah. So I will start again. So <laughs> this is a leaflet. And what I was showing is this is spread that I re really catch my eye. And I thought, that how modern is this, no? I mean, how modern is this for the time? Or, and what, look at this, for instance. This spread with this infographic. It looks a bit like a it's all type, no? I mean. Yes, it's, yes. it's fascinating, it's fascinating. So this is uh, in the 40s and also this spread with this, uh, I mean, the typeface on top of the, of the photo. So it, it's really cool. And what I want to do with this typeface that even though it's based on something that comes from far, uh, it, it's very contemporary at the same time. So this is what, this is my approach. To the develop of this. So I have a version that is the sister four that is more like the co, but the others are quite functional in a way. So you talk about the super, uh, super tipo veloz. So actually this is, a, this is a project that was developed in Spain in a time where printers didn't have so much resources, they couldn't buy so many typefaces, so they invited the system of combining elements to create these ones. Actually, the books, the books are very beautiful, are pieces of art. And when you talk to people who are involved in the development of the, the project, I mean, that they know how to go. They say, oh, you have these beautiful books that everything looks perfect. But to achieve that, they have to throw away a lot of uh, testing pages, of course, because it was printed in letterpress. So the system is quite delicate. Probably you know that there's a, a digital version of Super Tipo Overload and that it was done by Alex Ruchu together with Andrew Velius. And, and also now Roberto Granal, he is a net son template and he uses them with the students to create like a collage of letters with the templates. So it, it's, I don't know, I was not conscious of this, honestly, to be honest. I was not conscious of the relationship with Super Tipo Veloz. But mm -hmm. of course, if I go now to Super Tipo Veloz, I will find some of the elements that are very much the same. Yeah, yeah. So for me, I only wanted to, I mean, my, my starting point was these few letters I found in the leaflet. 
and for instance, I didn't want to change. Well, I, I don't have the C screen open now, but I didn't want to change some of them. For instance, the B is like in the world football, like we do two parts. So I wanted to be quite, um, quite uh, loyal to the origin because I had to design so many new letters that being loyal to five, it was perfectly fine. You know, all the rest I had to do it by myself. So. Does someone have a, a question to ask about this project, guys? Does there some Let question? me see the chat. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Raphael, uh, Mathieu, uh, Rainer, Christine, Anna, do you have some question about that? Alice? No, no question. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> do you plan, uh, Laura, do you plan to have some uh, template or to use it or, or do you have... Uh, Sorry, I did, uh, I'm going to show you something. I did this uh, already as a trial it was for my workshop in, uh, in Copenhagen. I did this. Mm. So wait, I'm going to put some white on it because you cannot see it. And it was super interesting to see how, how it behaves as an object, you know? So yes. this is part of the, so you see, this sentence, yeah. I was to see you again. So let, let me put yeah. this there. So this is a, it's already, it's, a, it's an A4, like a cardboard. And it was because the, the workshop I did, the two times I did the workshop, uh, this stencil workshop, the, the goal is not to design the full alphabet, the goal was to design a few letters to create a new, a new sentence from the origin. Mm -hmm. So I took this as an example. So I got this, this leaflet as a starting point, and then I, I finished with this. So I start with this, and I finish with this. So this was my, my example for students. So from something that already exists, I create a system. I understand how type design works, like a, in a, as a static point, and then I can create an object as a graphic designer, you know, like a something new. So this is something I want to use for promoting. I want to cut some more. And yeah, I don't know what I will do with that, but eventually it's possible. Yeah. You can do a template. I can do a template. Yeah. I could cut it with a plastic and have it as a gadget as well, you know. Do, do, I see more and more need to think, yeah? You are part of uh, this designer who use colors. Uh, do you have some plans or to, um, to um, if, if you sell the typeface in the future, do you have some, do yeah. you think about some recommendation or how to use it with colors? Because, you know, uh, people in type design industries, in many of them, at least when they present the typeface, on social networks or things like that, it's just black and white. You know, uh, white on black, or it's very difficult for them, or they, they hate, or it's not trendy, or it's not cool, whatever. They think they are That's more funny. cool if they, it's black and white, but they, are, they, they seem to be afraid of colors. Do you have an opinion about that? Yeah. You want? Yeah, yeah. Could you say something about that? No, actually, this is funny. This is funny because, I mean, I love color. Actually, these are the, these are the, 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 the postcards, right? And uh, I mean, yeah, and yeah. I, I know you uh, love colors, it's clear. <laughs> yeah, but it's funny because I gave the assignment to Gerard friend and, and he's working in black and white. <laughs> because he told me, I, I, see, I see it in black and white, but he's co combining the letters with some uh, graphics and it works pretty well. And for me, I really need to stop myself to put color on this, but it's his proposal. So I already told him, listen, the same you are doing, because he's black, black, white letters in what he's doing. So I told him, if this, if we kill the black background and we put four colors because we are four C, so we're creating a system of four. Everything will be based on four, you know, like a four yes. letters, letters with four, uh, words with four letters, so uh, we are creating this concept of four, 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 four. So, yeah. and four graphic elements, etc. But they actually, only, only if I kill the black and I put color in every sentence you are doing, it would be amazingly different. So I'm proposing him to do like, uh, in Instagram, for instance, you have the image, 
in black and white and then you have the color one <laughs> you know like when you pass it so you have the chance to see both you know so I, because also when you if i put everything together in instagram it will be really dark you know it will be really strong so i thought okay maybe we can make pairs of images in instagram so one will be in black and white and one in color you know? like a two switch yeah, yeah. or something yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah we'll see we'll see okay. Okay, uh, any more questions um, on, on, does someone have, want to ask something? No? Sebastian, say something. <laughs> hello, sorry to drop hey, in so late. Hello, hello, hello. Yeah, hello. I was hello. working, but uh, yeah. Yeah. glad to make it to the last part, but uh, no, no, no oh, fully we just questions. <laughs> we just started. So, let, let, so let's start with the question part. If there is not, on okay, yeah. the question that, that everybody uh, put uh, all together. So the first question will be, uh, since you've been in the business for a few years, do you think this pandemic economical crisis will affect the type design industry? What was your experience um, 10 years ago during the financial crisis, crisis. Yep. Uh, well, I think, I think, of course, it's going to affect us, but I think it may affect us in the same way it's going to affect the graphic design industry. I mean, because if you think about it, I mean, typefaces exist because people are using them. So if people are not really into business because they cannot have clients, we will also suffer from that, that they will not, I mean, or they will keep on using the typefaces they already have or things like this, no? But it's always, crises are always, it's always an opportunity as well. I remember, I mean, it's not the, my second crisis anyway. I already lived the crash of 1993 after Olympics in Barcelona. That is this, the the second time uh, no it was no actually the first time i lost my job in history because after after olympics i was working in an advertising agency that create the all all the identity of the olympics uh, events all the events related to the ceremonies and everything so when olympics were gone a lot of people had to leave you know so i already had this so, but it's very interesting because I opened my studio, my graphic design studio, Cosmic. It was open in 1994, so in times of crisis. And, and it was a great opportunity because it was a lot of, uh, of work based mostly in promotions. I remember perfectly in advertising, like promotion, promotions of things. Mm -hmm. Different, I'm talking about 1993. Eh? <laughs> and then it was a lot of work, a lot of work. So it was a different kind of work. So advertising agency need people to work on this not so cool thing that it was a promotion, you know, like a, a cheaper um, for free, whatever, you know, and we have a lot of work. So I, we could start our own studio because we have a lot of freelance to do on this, you know, and it, it, it was a different way of, of starting a business, of course, not like with the coolest clients, but with a lot of work that allowed us to open a studio. And also for advertising agencies, it's an opportunity because you have to be more clear when you do advertising. Normally clients were really focused on these agencies that were more creative. So they were using less uh, money, less resources, but they were asking for more creativity. So I think it's something that you need to do in a positive way that it may push you. You know, it may push you to things in a different way. It may push you to think different. It may push you to do different things that you have not done so far. Mm -hmm. So for me, I would like to think that the crisis is an opportunity. But this crisis, I think it's a bit different because it's so global. You know, at that yeah. time we have a local crisis. <laughs> you know? And now this is global crisis. So everybody will yeah. be affected in different ways, you know. So that's new that's new it's a different thing but also it's a different time because everything happens in the screens now so now is the time of online publishing online advertising online everything no 
And, and I think that it's really intense. It's a lot. It's, uh, it's too much. I cannot afford, I cannot be everywhere. It's impossible. I, you need like 36 hours on a screen to be aware of what's going on. And I think you need to be more selective what you want to do and what you want to look at. It's like the fake news, you know? <laughs> you yeah, cannot yeah. be following everything because the half of it is, is fake. So now I, have, I feel that I'm a bit more, um, more selective of uh, what I want to do and what I want to share, you know? But also I have the feeling that the uncertainty is so big that we need to, be, to slow down. A little bit, and we. I think it's an opportunity, to, opportunity for thinking. I don't know. I see Sebastian has a question there uh, concerning this. Go ahead. Yeah, I was um, triggered by uh, you saying that uh, with uh, older crisis it was local, and then the solutions or the work was maybe a little bit more local. And now everything is online. And of course, some people take advantage of this, but not everyone's, it's not everyone's strong suit. Do you feel that maybe in your, in your local context, you could be more relevant now? Or is that something that you would aspire, aspire to do, to be um, locally more uh, uh, visible? Or? It's a great question. It's a really good question because we are already talking about this. The fact is, I, I like to say to people that everybody has an history with this COVID thing. Everybody has a different history <laughs> and a different circumstances. Like uh, the one who is a student, the one who is a teacher, the one who is alone, the one who is sharing and, you know, everybody has a different circumstances now. The only common thing is that we are at home, you know. But I think now we are thinking about this how it's going to be in few months because nobody knows if we are going to be like this for three, six, nine months. So, and because of this, and be, I mean, I don't know where you are, probably you are in different parts of the world, but in France is something similar. You're a bit more relaxed um, in, in terms of uh, things look more relaxed <laughs> or, or at least from here. But in Spain, we are really, really at home. I mean, we can't do hardly nothing, you know. We go to buy groceries yeah. and that's it, you know. Uh, on Sunday, kids will go out. That's the good news. <laughs> you know, for two hours. It, it, that's it. What you say is the same in France. To, to, because you refer to France, it's the same. We need a paper to go out. Uh, okay, we so have, to have to, to have a paper sign to go out, if, if not. But we have no control. So people begin to go out more than before since this week. But do you have the police asking for the paper? Not uh, in my city, but maybe in Paris more. Uh, yeah. It's depending on the moment. It's, yeah. it's not uh, in every street or something like that. But yeah. the, the definitely forest, in Paris. Yeah, yeah definitely Paris in Paris. Like this? Uh, yeah, I've seen them like one time yeah. out of two, maybe. I wow. have, we have police here. Eh? I mean, I'm in the street and I have been passing through the police a lot of times because I, I go to, the other day I read that they put a fine to someone because this person didn't buy enough. So they thought he was shopping too little. <laughs> Come on. I mean, who are you to tell someone that you are not buying enough and you don't have to ride to go to the street to buy bread, for instance, you know? So I'm, I am going out what I really need. It. I only go out. But coming back to the question of us, um, he needs that we're talking about this, but probably because we are not going to be able to travel for a long time. You know, I mean, the most of my work is based on traveling. I was, I used to travel a lot the last five years. And for me, it's a big change. Not being able to travel is going to be a big change for me. So now we are talking about this, like for instance, our students, the future students, we will be all local. When we, if we manage to, rest, to open schools again in September, students will be from here any student will come from abroad because they will be scared of getting a lockdown if in case we have a, a problems later. So we're coming back to a situation 
on uh, something more like at the end of the 90s, you know, where we, he, everything was local. I'm talking about before the boom of uh, smartphones, you know, like yes, yes, before yes, Instagram. Yes. Let's talk about before Instagram, too, you know. And before I think Chief Instagram, Knight. I th I think Instagram was 2009 or 2008. I cannot remember, sadly. Let's say 10 yes. years, okay? So we're coming back to this situation now that we will be something like uh, 10 years ago, you know? And we will start doing things local, like buying groceries local, everything local. And actually, I, I'm already doing this. I, lo I buy in a small shops. I never buy in Amazon, but this is my principles already, you know? Uh, mm -hmm. And I think that's an opportunity to get to know each other better. I mean, here in Spain, the community of Thai designer is growing because we have uh, many, many students. We have, a, let's say, a boom of uh, studying Thai design. After 2006, 2007, we started to have like uh, this uh, every year full program at AINA school. And this was a complete surprise. So it was a moment that we thought that we reached the top of local students. And I think that maybe now stu local students will come to us. And I'm talking about Barcelona. Eh? I don't even want to think about people coming from Madrid or somewhere else because it had the same situation. We have two students now, one coming from the Basque country and one coming from Madrid, and they came back to the cities. And they are ready to come, by, come back by train to Barcelona. We reopened the school, you know? You know, I have a school now. I opened a school, Tipo G, it's an experiment. <laughs> But I have my own school with other teachers. We open our own proposal on Thai design, more based on workshop. But yeah. I think we will have more local students. We will have more opportunities to, to get to know each other. And I want to think that it's going to be translated <coughs> into a, a new scene, you know, something yeah. that yeah. comes after, after this. Because of this, being more with our colleagues and doing more things together even if it has to be online for a while. <laughs> you know? yeah, but I right. think at the end, we will have uh, many things coming. But I'm not sure about that because if we have internet, we will be still connected, you know? So mm -hmm. I don't, I'm not a guru, you know? I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea, honestly. But I have the feeling that our students are very grateful to us because we are doing double job as we used to do now, or even sometimes three times more, you know. We are attending mm -hmm. students almost every day. We are talking about them almost every day. We preparing the classes online is a lot of work. You cannot imagine, it's a lot of work. I mean, when you are in a class with a student, you are drawing with this student. When you are online, you cannot draw with this student. So you have to make marks in the papers. You have to also, communicate with words in a different way, you know? Yes. So everything is, is, is much more. I mean, the effort is, is, is much bigger for everybody, you know? So we, need, we are learning to be more, uh, more patient. We are learning to be more generous as well because yeah. we could yeah. slow down a little bit, you know? So things are, I don't know, I think for type is good actually. Okay, thank you for your, uh, for your, your first uh, question. <laughs> yeah. So let's go to the, to the second one. Uh, I will put it on the chat, uh, but I will, uh, yes, I will uh, do um, a, sh a short version on, on it. Yeah, okay, you, are, you have two periods in your type design. Maybe the first period, it's a long time ago now already. Mm. But um, you have the mm. period before, uh, type media on the period after. So why you decided? You are already uh, quite um, someone with a long experience when you decide to come back to, to, to learn something. It was uh, mm -hmm. on the middle of your career, let's say something like that. Maybe your career will be much longer after, I'm sure. <laughs> but but you see what <laughs> I mean? It's already, uh, yeah, you, you, you already have uh, many years of experience. So you decide to come back. Mm. Why this decision to, to stop what you're doing and to start again a new, um, a new way to, to draw type 
And uh, yes, could you explain about that? Yeah. Why is the decision yeah, that's, on why you are now? Yeah. 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 Why you are now? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I went to, I, I mean, I started working very soon. I mean, I belong to a generation when we started working in graphic design, there was a lot of opportunities. So, should I wait? For, okay. No, no, so, no, no, no. I would say that, I mean, when I started to, to study graphic design, it was a bit before the Olympics. So it was before 1992. I started studying before the night in, in 19, uh, oh my God, it's really a long time ago. It's 19, 1986, actually. 1986, I started, I started as a student of graphic design. So at that time, when I started to work, it was Me a lot was of... Eight, of 87. Yeah. Me, uh, I started 97 after you. Yeah, so imagine. So I was, after, after I didn't go to university. After high school, I went, uh, after bachelor, I went immediately to, to do graphic design in the public school, actually, not in university. So at that time, there was a lot of, of work. So I immediately, out of school, I started to work. And then after working in advertising agencies, I opened my own studio. So I was working like hell, like a lot. And then in a moment, when I was already like 33, 34 years old, it was this moment that said, come on. I mean, I had no minute to, to really think about what to do with type. So I started in Typotones in 1992, but it was very amateur way. So at, at that time we were all employees of someone else, somewhere, someone else. And it was very easy in a way to meet and work on type in your free time because you had free time. But as soon as I started doing my own studio, I could do less and less and less and less. And then I started being very frustrated because I had this idea that I really had to do type, that it was my thing and I was not doing it. Mm -hmm. So I started, I would not say depressed, but extremely frustrated, extremely frustrated. I'm very exhausted actually of uh, this, this thing. So then I decided to stop. And before that, I did uh, this uh, project online in PDF with, uh, with Alan Dastrup, that it was this uh, typo red, we call it typo red. We were sharing a PDF through, uh, so people were, like uh, supporters of the project and we were receiving an email and we were sending this pdf by email with the modem like to subscribers you know and then an article that alan dastrup decided to write about education in type design in europe and it's when i discovered that i could study type design and it was like <laughs> you know it was like uh, what can I study type design? This is something that is possible because it was not possible in Spain. This didn't exist in Spain. We were only doing exercises of uh, typography. So we were all amateurs. Nobody had the training, you know, in Spain, a specific training on that. So then I started to do my own research and then I discovered the existence of, uh, of uh, type of media thanks to Alejandro Lo Celso uh, because he was, he was in Nancy, in the atelier in Nancy. And yeah. he stayed, he's uh, Argentinian, but he stayed in Europe for a long time. And he made a super nice article about that. Because we asked him about Nancy, and he said, no, wait, I, I will write something longer about in general in Europe. So then I contact Type Media. And because of Typotons, I was accepted to enroll Type Media. And, and for me, it was like a sabbatic year. Let's say, I, ha I really had to stop. I was exhausted. I couldn't go work in design anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I said, okay, instead of going to Bali or to Hawaii, <laughs> I will go to do Thai design because it's something that I think I, I will, and it was amazing. I mean, I have no other type of, I mean, type of media was a before and after completely. So mm -hmm. there I learned a methodology. I learned about, of course, uh, calligraphy, I never be before in my life. So my first time, in, I was 35 years old when I went to The Hague. So this is why I always tell people, I have, I, I, it's really funny when some students of mine, oh, I'm 30 years old, I'm so old. And I always telling them, I went to The Hague when I was 35, you know? So 
for me, now it's this when I came back from the Hague in 2004, and now we're in 2020. So I am really working on type, like type, type in education and type design and type by commission for 15 years now. So first it was the amateur thing, and later it's the, let's say the professional, the professional thing. <laughs> Bali and type do not exclude each other. My goal in life is to do type. Okay, Rainer, I also want to do this. Can I come with you? <laughs> can I, we can create a community in Bali. I think, um, I think once we're, we're out of the COVID, everybody will think about where you really want to live, you know, and what you really want to do with your life, you know. So for me, coming back from Taipa Media, it was uh, also, after Taipa Media, I had the opportunity to work with house industries as a freelance immediately. And this gave me the confidence because I was really, I had this feeling in the Hague that I come back to Barcelona. I tried to stay in the Netherlands, but I didn't manage to get a job. <laughs> so nobody wanted to hire me because I had too much experience, they said. We cannot hire you, you, you as an internship. Yeah. You know the story about Netherlands, the people say there is more type designers than policemen. Yeah, and also they, was, they were telling me, <laughs> something is being a student here and something else is working in the Netherlands. So no, yeah. Bali in the 78 and type, not. <laughs> yeah. So I, I got, this was my fear that after finishing type of media, you have this void. You know, it's really, a, I mean, the, the people in class is your family. Mm -hmm. Your mentors are, you know, you don't do anything else that the drawing type all day. And the only go to bed and you cook sometimes and you wash your clothes. You don't do anything else. So after you finish type of media, there's a huge void. Honestly, it's true. It's a huge void in, in your brain. And, and you have the feeling that you have to do something with that, but you are exhausted <laughs> again. <laughs> you know? And for me, I was super lucky that when I came back to Barcelona, I got in touch with house industries because they were looking for some freelance people and, and I, I worked with them. And it was another training. It was super interesting because then I was working in a team and a person mm -hmm. with a person like Ken Barber that for me is another of the questions you made, you, Cecilia made to me, like who are the persons that, you know, and Ken Barber keep is one of those. Keep that, yeah, so later, keep that yeah. So, and then because of this continuity, and also I had the opportunity to teach, then mm -hmm. I was like, okay, type, that's it. That's it. This is my frame now, you know? Okay, so the next question, it's about calligraphy. Uh, because you yeah. refer to calligraphy just a few minutes ago. So um, that's a question from uh, Cecilia. Uh, she will mm -hmm. join us a little later from what she say on the, on the base camp, the tool we used. Uh, okay, yeah. so could you say something about that? Calligraphy, type design, um, yes. Uh, yeah. Enough, yes. Something about teaching also, yeah. Discipline, yeah, yeah. So discipline, discipline, yeah. Austerity of yeah. life, yeah. Well, um, he says, like, when well, I'm reading the question, speaking of calligraphy as a craft or one way to transcend in these disciplines to take the step from apprentice to teacher. Yeah, well, this is, this is uh, interesting because I didn't choose to be a teacher. I was uh, asked to be a <laughs> teacher. <laughs> you know? it, was not, uh, it was not in my plan, actually. And you, you were not but, a teacher but, before type media. Before Type Media, we, you never no, teach no, no. anyone? No, no, no. Never. It's after. Never. 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 It's okay. after. So yeah. it was in coincidence when I came back from The Hague. I mean, it was um, um, in 2004, at the end of 2004. But they were already looking for teachers. They were already looking for teachers because it was uh, in 2004 is when the Masters at Aina started. It was not a master yet, it was a postgraduate. And they were looking for teachers. So there's not so many people in Spain like this type design. Uh, we're very few. I mean, 
few type designers and few people that want to teach or they have the possibility to teach or because they are involved in other projects or they want to keep on being graphic designer as well. So I was asked by the first experience I had was with, um, it was Raquel Pelta who asked me to become a typography teacher in Elisawa. So I started te being te teaching as a typographer, teaching type for editorial design. And then one year after, I was enrolled in the masters of, uh, of uh, type design at AINA. But you know, now with the perspective of years, I have the feeling that I rushed it a bit. I, I think I had started too fast to teach. Because for me, it was uh, also because when I came back from, from The Hague, I had no, no jobs. So I went into teaching as a job, you know? <laughs> like, okay, yeah, yeah. I need to, I need a job. <laughs> okay. So, okay, I teach, you know? Yeah, maybe uh, I can say something about that, but it's similar to what you say. It seems it's different today than uh, in the 90s or 2000s. When you begin, when you switch to, to be graphic designer, to be a type designer, you, you refer to that before. You say, yeah. I was in agency and during my free time, uh, because I, I was an employee, I'm able to design type. And then you are begin to be freelance with your own small studio, and you don't have time anymore to do type design on, 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 the, on the side. So it's, it, it was, it was I, today it, it's also the case, I think like Mathurier, it's perfect, perfectly the example. Maybe you, have to, you want to say something about that. But when you begin mm -hmm. to be a type designer in the 90s and 2000s, the only way to make this happening is to be a teacher. Yeah. If you are a teacher one or two days by week, you, you have some, some, some income every month that it's stable. Yeah. So like that, you, you, can, you can embrace some job who take years to be published and to have to have some, some royalties back. Today is a little different, I have the feeling, because when, when young people go out from large, um, all these school in all over the world, uh, Occidental world mostly, they, they have uh, all these families who need people working with them at distance or locally, but they, can, they are able to hire people to do certain kind of job, who was not the case at all because now the industry is more grow, growing a little more. Yes. It's not just individuals separately, but people, there is a team of two or three people in many, many places, and they need to hire people to help them. So the situation is yeah. not the same. But yeah. at your time, it's true. that was it's the true. only choice. Yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely. I agree completely. I agree completely. So it was like, okay, there was not so much uh, people into uh, uh, asking for custom typefaces. There was not so much people developing we have let the tools we have now i mean we didn't have glyphs <laughs> you know yeah. we didn't yeah. have glyphs so we didn't have we were working all of us have we were working with phone lab we had tools that were a bit more uh, let's say uh, not so <laughs> intuitive in a way you know they were more you really have to be more geeky you know when we were using all the tools yeah. now yeah. tools are more a bit more simple the interfaces are completely different completely different I mean, it's much easier in a way, you know, in a way. I'm not saying it's easier because you have to know that you have to have the knowledge. I mean, software is a tool. It's not a tool. It's, I mean, you have to have the knowledge. But the tools are more uh, sympathicas, no? We have, it, we have tools that are more kind. And <laughs> we have tools. Yeah. I don't know how you do that. <laughs> so... That's true. But then coming back to the question, you know, I have this feeling that I, I rushed it a little bit to become a teacher and I did put time I needed to, of what I got in type media, to put it on me, you know, on my work. I mean, I had no regrets about being a teacher. I love it and I'm very happy that I became a teacher because uh, I, I got to meet uh, amazing people and I'm super happy but calligraphy and typography are two and type design are completely two different words I mean yeah. I will never be a calligrapher you know <laughs> I'm practicing a practice someone who practices 
uh, calligraphy, no? And also every every teacher is 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 different, you know. But what I'm saying now is that calligraphy has a huge influence in my work because Good. I look oh, at letters oh. from that, you know. Yeah. Do you think? Uh, let's precise a little bit the question about calligraphy on on typography on type design. Um, do you feel um, 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 there is different way to 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 teach type design? Does it? Do you feel it's possible to teach type design without calligraphy, or it's it's an obvious way to do it? Without calligraphy, it's much more difficult, or not? What is yeah. your your point of view about that? Uh, I mean. I come from the, I mean, I study in the Hague. So type of media, I mean, the methodology is based on calligraphy, you know, but I will remember all, all I mean, I will remember <laughs> all my life, that moment when we have the second part, let's say, you know, from calligraphy to typography, you know? Yeah. And yeah. for me, I couldn't, if you see my, my project Roomba, the sketches I had before, yes. Yeah. Even yeah. if I was doing calligraphy, I was completely lost, completely lost. So what I want to say is that not so, it's not so immediate, you know, and I see now with my students. For me, it's super, for me, it's like a super obvious now when I'm starting sketching a typeface. For me, it's super obvious that I reproduce the calligraphic proportions and the contrast and everything. Now it's like almost automatic, you know. But yeah. when I was, I started, I was started in the Roomba in type of media, trying to put calligraphy into typography for me was extremely difficult. It was extremely hard. And I also yeah. see it in my students now that it's extremely hard. But then learning not calligraphy from the drawing, but learning calligraphy as the base of proportions, rhythm, yeah. a yeah. counterform, you know, you, in calligraphy, you learn to look at the counterforms, uh, the you know. Counterforms. Yes. Yeah. And this, yeah. yeah. Now, so this is very, very important. So for me, calligraphy uh, is the base of, uh, of uh, design and also the base of lettering, actually. I mean, and my work is a mix of all of these, you know, the base of calligraphy, lettering, and type design. But a lot of people are doing type design without being tra trained in calligraphy and doing nothing related to calligraphy. So if you are working on a very parametric form, you don't necessarily need calligraphy. But even for me, even for a geometric sans serif, let's say, <laughs> uh, when you have to deal with contrast, with modulation, calligraphy is very useful, you know? Because yeah, yeah, you yeah. know yeah. where are the, you know, the thick and the thin parts of the letters, you know? Yes. So yes. for me, it's very, it's very, very important. It's interesting to, uh, we, we, uh, Jeremy uh, Tonkar was with us uh, last week. He don't refer yeah. at all, he, he, he never used calligraphy, he just draws the letter forms. And I recall uh, yeah. to have uh, this constant discussion with Matthew Carter through the years about calligraphy. And I, I asked, because I have, like you, not with uh, type media, because the French, uh, the French way to, to, to learn type design is to use calligraphy. Uh, Exactly, not exactly, but similar uh, paths as type and media. And so without mm -hmm. calligraphy, it's impossible to, to teach people or to, it's it's much more slow process. But Ma for Matthew Carter, he say um, that he doesn't need calligraphy, he knows the shape. So it's completely uh, disconnected. Yeah. When you go to type media or the French way or many places in the world today, the people actually, mm -hmm. uh, the students, uh, use a calligraphy pen to, to draw the type. But for Matthew Carter, he, he say, you don't need to do that. You can, you can go directly to draw type. It's interesting, but it's maybe because he's not a teacher. He doesn't have, uh, he, he doesn't need a shortcut to do that. <laughs> maybe because yes. to, to teach people, yeah. because he, he knows that from, he was born on it, or he, he was born with type, I don't yeah. know. But, but it's yeah. expensive. Yeah, it makes sense. Because... Actually, yeah, I think when you are a teacher, you, I mean, what I, am, I did as a teacher was to reproduce what I learned as a student. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was my way of uh, teaching, you know. Mm. And, yeah. yes. But for instance, when I started teaching in Aina, uh, my colleagues, uh, the, 
it was uh, in Neo Jerez, um, in Neo Jerez, Jose Mauros from Typotons, you know, and Jose Ma never had training in calligraphy. And he's, I mean, he's my partner at Typotons, Jose Ma. And he was never trained in calligraphy. And his way of drawing letters is more like a structured letter. So he's more interested in geometrics and series. And, and I mean, he has the, the sensibility for that. And he feels very comfortable with that. And he doesn't miss. He doesn't miss mm, doing calligraphy. And Inigo Jerez, who has not been trained in calligraphy, on the other way, he's an amazing good uh, drawer. And he yeah. says, so, so, I design so letters. Yeah. I design letters because I'm able to draw. He's an amazing yeah. drawer. His drawings are beautiful. So he can, his sketches are works of art. So if yeah. you are a good drawer and you decide that what you draw are letters instead of drawing trees or, or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So he was trained in drawing. So yeah. this you comes to the from... idea that you need to sketch by hand, you know, drawing by yeah. hand. Yeah. It's also something that if you are skilled on that in drawing, you can also draw letters. You know, you don't need to so be a you have a question. Uh, you, have, you have a question from Sebastian yeah. about yeah. Uh, the practice of calligraphy. Yes, for I know, those of I, us, yeah. Laura, please, please, Laura, answer. Yeah, answer it's something. Please. Yeah, I'm doing calligraphy every weekend for two hours. One for warming up, <laughs> because you really need to warm up your hand. And I'm now, for instance, I'm doing, a, I'm doing Italic. I'm uh, trying to write in Italic, yeah. you know? Yeah. I'm not doing things that, because I don't have the space. I mean, my table, I have one table at home that is a table for everything now. For the computer, yeah. for all the papers. Now you see, see my table. If I want to eat here now, there's no space. <laughs> so that, I only have one table. Home. You are at home. You are at home right now. It's your home. Yeah, I'm at home. Yeah, I am yeah. at home now. I mean, I have a t I have a space in a shared space, yeah. and now I I, I we are a bit more relaxed. Apparently, as a as a freelance, I can go. Two weeks yes. ago, I couldn't go to work, so now yeah. I need a paper, as you said. And I have this paper going from here to there. I work there. My table is there. I'm paying a table there, so I can go there. But yeah. I thought that today, because I had other things to do, I could, it would be okay to stay yeah. at home. Yeah. Um, I will just yeah. answer quickly to Sebastian about the question. The only moment where I, I do calligraphy is at Thai Paris, the first day. That's <laughs> never. Okay, sometimes to do a to do a shitty thing uh, for a birthday card for a friend, but no, that's yeah. it. Never, yeah. never. I never do uh, calligraphy. Yeah. Never. Actually, I also do. We also do calligraphy twice a year. We go to this uh, intensive workshop driven by yeah. Goriol Miro, who is a professional calligrapher, and we go mm -hmm. like uh, twenty people. Uh, Gina and and Cecilia also go there. Um, and yeah, yeah, yeah. we do calligraphy like full time, crazy, like many, many crazy. hours. <laughs> and it's, no, 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 it's super nice. But you know, now okay. we are doing calligraphy also with Uriol on Sunday, Saturdays. And it's super interesting because a different methodology because of online. So when we are in the workshop, he draws on, on the big paper, you know, like with a big brush or big pen, whatever. Yeah. So. He, so he makes huge letters for us as a teacher. But now, because of online, it's super nice, and I highly recommend it to you. It's, he writes, and we are writing at the same time as he does. And he's commenting. So he has his, his telephone, his camera on top of his paper. And OK, work. So we are reading first two words. And then he's telling us, we are going to link, imagine, the A then, okay? And now we continue the R and the E, we don't, we don't link it. And it's super nice, it's extremely nice because then we are writing with him, you know? Yeah. And yes, yes. we are super focused, super focused on the paper and it's really meditation. It's fantastic, it's wonderful, it's super nice. Okay, so, the next question. so, so let's go you to mean, the next question. Yeah, uh, we, you already answered about that little bit. Um, I write the name. Yeah. I write the name. Maybe okay. the one about 
the one about uh, uh, teacher of master of Salida photography. Sino. Yes, uh, influencing Yeah, I'm sending you students. the name and the website. Yeah, okay, mm. okay. Yeah, thanks, thanks, thanks for that. Uh, could you answer to mm. the next one about influencing many students or influence influencer on your career? So, yes, cutting people, yeah. So, um, the student you influenced, maybe it's not exactly the question of Cecilia, but maybe the students uh, you influenced on now become incredible people, on the people who influenced you. You know, there is a two, the two side. You have been influenced mm -hmm. by people or you influenced people who are now exceptional. Yeah, there is a, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's well, such thing happening. You know, yeah. that's a very, I mean, this is a very funny question because I, I, don't, I don't know how I influence someone. I mean, I'm not concerned about that. And this maybe is a question for Cecilia and for Francisco that they are here because I was, I was the her teacher, yeah. you know? Yeah. I was the teacher yeah. of Cecilia yeah. and the teacher of, of Francisco. And I would really like to know if they had any, <laughs> I don't right now. And I want to know if I have any influence on them and it would be super nice to know. But I mean, I, I do it with passion. I really do it with passion. And uh, I, I mean, I, I just sharing what I know, you know? I mean, it's, I have no secrets for students. I mean, I share everything I know, you know? I'm not keeping things for myself, you know? I do it in the best way I can do it, you know? But the influence about which people influence me, I mean, type design for me, I was looking, for instance, of course, Matthew Carter, you know? Everybody look at the work of Matthew Carter. I no more sound. Yeah, no more sound. Yeah, the sound is lost. Uh, I stop. I stop. I lost sound. I lost sound. No, I. Can you listen to me? Listen to me. Can you listen to me? Yeah, yeah. Maybe you can stop uh, to have the video for a couple of minutes to have. To have uh, your sound, if it if the sound uh, disappear, switch to sound only and remove the video for a couple of minutes. Yes. Okay. But uh, okay. try again. Try again. Try again. Mm -hmm. No, I don't know if you listen to what yeah, I say. That is. Okay. Start okay. Again. Good. Okay. No, what, what I'm saying that I mean only when I started to to learn about other designers. It was when, when we entered in, uh, in the community through phone shop. So it was because of phone shop that we got to know Erika Speakerman and all these people, you know, like Erika Speakerman was the person who was really someone who helped the buttons. I mean, because of uh, Mas Kisman, because Mas Kisman, this Dutch, Type designer yeah. was living in Barcelona, so he was a music, he's a musician like Josema, and they connected mm. through music, and then he introduced mm. us to phone shop. So then, in a moment, we started to be concerned that people like what we were doing. Then we were started to be aware of the work of others because, again, we are talking about 1992. We only had information through books. Okay, yeah. at that time there was no modem, nothing. We were distributing typefaces with disquettes by post. You know. So I love you, I, I, I love this book. Uh, we 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 are influenced only by books. It's, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's, it's incredible. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we learn only with books. Uh, yeah, I mean, what? But in the good sense, I mean, and yeah, yeah, it was super sure. precious. It was super precious to. I remember when I discovered the figure of Neville Brody, you know, and his typeface is like was like. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I remember that at that time. At the time, I have uh, a continuous, like, you know, like a brain exploding all the time. And like, oh, look at this life face. Oh, look, who is this guy? Who is this person, you know? And how he does this? Oh, amazing. I, I remember this perfectly. And I remember when we had photographer, and then we were able to open the type faces we were buying. Buying, I'm saying, for real. <laughs> you know? Because we were, like, buying disquettes of type faces of others as okay, let, I will buy this typeface. I really want to see how it's done. 
And then we have photographer and then we can open the phone and oh, look at this, you know? So we need to draw faces by opening by faces of other people. And oh, look, okay, yeah, okay, points at the stream, of course. And, some, and then we are learned to judge Thai faces by the, how they were drawn, you know? That's very interesting, actually. I never talk about this. By opening the phones of others, we learned a lot, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I remember, like, Matthew Carter, of course. Matthew Carter, was, uh, uh, but also Herald Unger, for me. I mean, the way he, this, Herald Unger, <laughs> for me, also because I met him in person and I had an amazing impression of his personality and his way of talking, his way of being, his way of dressing, his way of everything, you know? And, and then I, I remember that looking at the Thai faces of Herald Unger for me was, okay, he has a style, you know? He's drawing, I mean, also Martin Mayor, Martin Mayor as well. I remember okay. discovering Scala and thinking, okay, he's working on his own work, but go revolving around his own ideas, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, his way of looking also at time. You know? yeah, 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 yeah. And then this had a, a huge impact on me also, mm -hmm. thinking yeah. that you, you, I mean, you can develop a style, a way of looking, and you are putting your way of looking at things in type phrases, you know? And, and this had, for me, was like, okay, I discovered like, wow, <laughs> you know? It was like, okay, this is, this is it, you know? This is it. I can express myself through type, you yeah, know? Yeah. This I, was, I, I, for I, me, was very, very important. Before to go to the next question, I have to say, to pay an homage to, uh, to Gar Tanger because you are here. Um, uh, it's, it's very small thing, but uh, I was in Barcelona in 96 for a conference about newspaper. And uh, we were only yeah. type, two type designers, uh, Gar Tanger and me, maybe someone else, but I don't recall. And I recall of a long walk on the Ramblas about type design during hours and hours until three o'clock in the morning discussing about type in the Ramblas with Gerhard Unger. Yeah, Every yeah, day, yeah. We, we come back to the hotel, we go to the restaurant together, we spend the evening together, and we discuss and discuss through the Ramblas in Barcelona. So, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Gerhard yeah. Unger for, no. for, for, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for me, Gerhard Unger has been always, uh, yeah. Also because of his craft, you know. And the same with Ken Barber, because Ken Barber, everybody knows Ken Barber as a lettering artist. But when yeah, I but have the opportunity, he's a type designer, you know. Yeah. When I have the opportunity to work with him in this project, in two typefaces and house industries, uh, the holiday, holiday Sounds and later uh, Girard Sans Souci. And also Girard Sans Souci also with Ben Keel. Yeah. It, it was super nice. I mean, it was super nice, the, the feedback that we had, you know, working together. And it was, I mean, the, 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 the papers I had from him, you know, sending by scanning and sending by email, you know, with the feedback is super, super nice. And for me, I really like the way he looks at type, you know. I, I mean, I have, I, I'm quite pop. <laughs> I have this, uh, I like pop, I like 50s, I like uh, vintage stuff, you know, and, and I, remember discovering house industries because of uh, his uh, the specimens that were really like uh, wow a beautiful pieces of design you know something you want to keep you know yeah. so so there's a lot of things happening at the same time it's not only one thing graphic design approach to graphic design the work of others books uh, graphic design graphic designers like Neil Bill Brody using typefaces for his projects so there's a lot of things going on at the same time, putting you on a track, on, you know, trying to find your own, own you, you way of to, you, know. yeah, you refer to, um, to um, pop or, or maybe also music, David Brody. Do you mean that um, the, mu the music you are listening or magazine you are reading uh, uh, for music in the 90s uh, with, mm. uh, you know, a magazine like The Face or things like that, 
with the yes. work of yes. uh, David Brody have the in influence yeah. because of all aspects of, of the life of the, of the 90s. I am asking you because we have all a bunch of young guys who don't know what was the 90s, the 80s on everything. So maybe <laughs> you can say something yeah. about the, this young yeah. generation. No, actually, that. that's a very, it's a very interesting. No, this is a very interesting question because after I, I uh, lost my job in, at the advertising agency, I started to work with Patty Nunez, who had a huge influence also on me as a graphic designer. So it was the first time I was working, I, I passed for working in an agency of 80 people to be the assistant of only one person. <laughs> so meaning that I had to do all the process. I, I stopped being someone who does something in the chain. I had to do everything, including talking to clients. And then I also learned from her because well, she's, uh, if you don't know her, is super, very good designer. She's National Prize of Design in Spain, the first woman getting it, actually. And put the, the name on the, on the chat. Yeah, put I will put it here. So, yeah. so she, she, I list, she had amazing, I'm talking about 1994, eh? she had amazing catalogs of typography at her studio. You know? <coughs> uh, and then the way we were working, it was like uh, I was, I learned to work before. I, in advertising agency, I was the one setting uh, headlines in letter set. <laughs> Nobody, I mean, I learned to space typeface this because I was the person using letter set at the advertising agency. I was the person who, I had the, the, the layout from a director and, uh, and I was thinking like, okay, this may be Times, they may be Caslon, you know, and going to the archive of uh, letter set and browsing you know and okay this and then composing and spacing yeah. so i learned to space typefaces thanks to letter set what i think now is a it's an amazing gift I, I mean i cannot imagine a better way to learn to space typefaces than with letter set actually <laughs> you know? so i learned to space typefaces by by eye you know not in a digital world just you know by rubbing letters yeah. mm -hmm. so this was uh, something that patty appreciated a lot in me because it was an unusual skill of a graphic design so young mm -hmm. someone who was interested in type and then when i entered to work with her we had these catalogs of type like homage to fields phones all these all catalogs and we were scanning letters and i was composing for logotypes and etc so I also had, I was super lucky that I could manage to work on this. So she was a designer <clears throat> for the clubs in Barcelona. She was working for auto suits. She was working for all the brands of fashion. She was working for everybody. She was extremely famous at that time. And, and then I was really into this uh, design world, you know, like, um, and, and the people who were uh, asking for design at that time were music, fashion, <laughs> mostly and then we have these magazines there so what's happening in london okay <laughs> you know? and i remember also the influence of neville brody as a student because we have only one colleague in the class who was able to go to london i mean at that time traveling to london was super expensive <laughs> you know it was taking a plane was super expensive expensive buying a computer was super expensive and it was this guy going to london and bringing books from london and bringing them to the class and, and everybody like, whoa, you know. <laughs> and, and it was, there were not so many books. I remember, I have some of them, actually. I have these books, of course. Later, I bought them. But, you know, everybody had the same influences. This is what I want to say. I mean, there were not so many people publishing about design either. So there were very few designers. And now I think it's, the, the phenomenon is even bigger. But at that time, we start to have these stars of, of design yes. already, yeah. you know, but now it's much bigger. But I had a, a huge influence on pop culture. And also because I wanted to be an industrial designer. Before graphic design, I wanted to be an object designer. Influenced by fifths, you know, I said, I, mean, I want to design cars. I mean, <laughs> So one of the things I wanted to do when I was 16 years old, I was really like fascinated and still fascinated with objects. So all together is my background, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, so let's go to the next question. Uh, hmm. uh, the one about uh, organization type competition. 
Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, I really need. So Actually, I think there, that is one, there is one missing organization because you refer to that. It's an eight IPI because they refer to uh, TDC and things like that, design competition, but also uh, yes, non-profit organization. Yeah, it's part of the thing. Yeah, please. Yeah, I mean this came later. This came much later. Um, I mean TDC was only happening this year. Uh, I enrolled type competitions. I mean, sometimes and same type faces, and then I got TDC prize uh, several times. But for me, the experience in TDC compared to Morisawa, for instance, <laughs> it's a uh, it's quite different, no? Also, I had the opportunity in Morisawa. I was extremely surprised when I got the letter of invitation to be a jury of Morisawa. I was like, wow, <laughs> it's, why me? You know, it's like really so I'm extremely honored about this. And, you know, when you are there in a competition, you are in another country, another way of doing them, you have uh, Matthew Carter in the jury. You have this feeling that you can die already, you know? <laughs> okay. You are in Japan with Matthew Carter in a jury. I mean, everything is done. <laughs> so you can, I mean, and of course, but, you know, Matthew Carter is someone who is a person probably you know that is one of the few persons that have been through all the processes of Thai design in history, yes. you know, yes. like punch, punch, punch cutting, everything. So, you know, his knowledge is, is uh, you cannot understand his knowledge. You cannot even know how is his knowledge. But it was very interesting because he was, uh, as a jury, he was only participating from, you know, just coming by the table from time to time and, and just, pointing some things. It was not really uh, uh, influencing the decisions. But there are very, it's a lot of difference between TDC and Morisawa. Morisawa, anybody could enroll. And TDC, mm -hmm. you need to pay to be a participant there. So the selection is uh, much shorter in TDC. So in Morisawa, there's a pre selection. And what we could see, but the interesting thing about this, Morisawa was in 2019 and like, TDC has been 2020, is that there's a lot of things happening with, um, with type now that are common. I had the feeling that you have these uh, different ways now. So there's people who are looking at typeface as a way of expression, and they sometimes a bit too trendy, maybe. So, but I think people are very interested in looking for a place for self-expression. Other people are using type as an exploration of the technique, like uh, let's say variable fonts, what, te what technology allows me to do. Let's work on variable fonts because this will be something that later will be used for pe by people. <coughs> so they are more advanced, thanks to technology. And then also is this expansion of uh, systems to uh, other writing scripts. No? So adaptations of typefaces that are already there to new, uh, writing systems. But we could see a lot of craft, honestly, a lot of craft. So extremely people really taking care of drawing, really like taking care of drawing. And this was very, very nice to see. And I think this is something that is very, was very important for us when judging, something that is well crafted. It, this was really, really important. So seeing that the craft was there, also that the personal inputs are there in the typeface that this person is saying something with type and also of course the concept the idea behind it you know mm -hmm. what makes it as different as a different way of thinking a family a different way of uh, of uh, thinking something that is already there but uh, drawing a different way so we were really very interested in and also very emotional in a way because i remember this feeling that all of us like, yes, this one for sure, you know, this one for sure. We were all sure that this typeface had to go because it was extremely appealing in terms of, uh, it, it was awakening in you feelings like, uh, okay, this is beautiful. This is super happy. This is super emotional. This is strong, bold. This is really powerful, you know, this idea mm -hmm. is something different, something you, cannot, you have not seen before. And it was very interesting because all of us, were attracted 
by the same kind of thing. And later, the discussion goes much, much deeper in levels. And then the, the richest thing about being part of this jury is the discussions about what is valuable and what is not, and what is going farther, you know? Mm -hmm. I learned a lot, of course. I mean, it's, it's you, about, you, for you me, the about, about, about learning. You speak about the Maurice Award or the TDC uh, right now? Uh, in both. General? Both. In okay. general. In general. In general, this is what you, I mean, this is what you, I could have seen in the last year, actually. Now, the type is a, a way of self-expression, self in a way. Yeah. Yeah. And I really like that. The people are not as scared of, uh, of using type as a way yeah. of, of expression, you know? Okay, you, you have, uh, it's almost uh, already uh, a part of your answer. The next question is yeah. about the type and the release and your release uh, on, on the, the special question about the local, the local business, on the local scene uh, at the end of the, of the first question. But you already reply about the first part a uh, hmm. little bit. Uh, maybe yeah. if you want to say something more about, about that. Qual quality, quantity, it's maybe a good, uh, good thing to, to, to discuss or to have an answer, a view from you. Um, yeah, hmm. maybe the only thing it's really important. You already have uh, something about craft and things hmm. like that because of yeah. the judging. Yeah. But uh, quality, quantity, yes, uh, maybe you have to say something to new generation about that. Hmm. You mean like, uh, when I'm a very slow designer. Uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm not, uh, I'm not interested in quantity at all, you know. So hmm. for me, is I think the, the interesting word is more in quality than in quantity, you know. Yeah, but this yeah. my personal approach because I'm more focused on that, on quality than in quantity, you know. So, but I mean, I don't say anything against quantity in the sense that if people consider designing typefaces that have like 24 styles and, you know, uh, probably someone will be there. But the problem is not only about this, it's, I not think it's a problem. I think that this is something that happens always when you are teaching, you know. I'm also a teacher of typography for publication design. I'm not teaching, I'm a teacher of type design and a teacher of editorial design. And the problem of students of uh, graphic design, the ones who are dealing with design a magazine, design a book now, they don't know where to look at, you know. It's too much, there's too much, you know. And this is why they are mostly choosing typefaces that catch their eye, you know. So you are, the teacher is the one who has to show them, um, <coughs> well, I lost, uh, you know, you see me? I lost Jean-Francois. Yeah. Yeah. So I know, no. So the, the students, they don't know what is Frutiger. They don't know what is universe. They don't know what's Franklin Gothic, you know. And then you need to teach, show them typefaces that are what we call go war horses, you know. They, don't, yes. they are not interested in this. But later, when they have to design magazines or books, they need to learn about them, you know? Yeah. So I have this feeling now that, I mean, of course there are type designers who are designing typefaces for editorial design, but the students who are now future, future users of type, you know, they are more catchy. They are looking at typefaces that catch their eye, you know? So yeah. I have this role now, opening their eyes to typefaces that might be less uh, less flamboyant or less uh, whatever, but they are the ones they need to learn to use, you know, as yeah. a graphic designer, you know. Yeah. So now there are much more typefaces that are based on display, maybe the effect, you know, that are good for magazines. But for books, we need something else. So I'm trying to yeah. teach my students about the, the types of typefaces, <laughs> you know, yeah. mostly. Yeah. And then also teaching them where to look at them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Utilitarian typeface rather than just display. Yeah. The, the typeface exactly. we have some use. Yeah. Practically, uh, you can yeah. use for language, for text, for reading, for, yeah. Yeah, not just to, to do uh, image on Instagram. 
Yeah, yeah well, exactly. But later, when they are, they have these super big families. For them, it's extremely difficult to understand when they have to use medium. <laughs> you know? Like, okay, yeah, um, yeah. contrast. For instance, I'm teaching also like a huge regular, don't use a medium next to a regular. Yeah. So I'm teaching them how to look at them. And only when I highlight them about contrast, I talk a lot about contrast, hierarchy. So it's good to have families that have a lot of weights when you need to work in a project with huge hierarchy but at the same time they are quite lost this is happening to me they are using big families and they are using many semi bold mm. <laughs> you know and it's because they don't know you know so sometimes using something that is just regular regular italic bold and bold italic is enough yeah, but they yeah, yeah. get quite lost you know so yeah. I think it's not a problem that we have these typefaces. We need to teach them how to use type, you know? And there's a huge lack on that, you know, on, le on knowledge about how to use type. So, I, so yeah, I don't you know if I have a comment you, by, uh, by Rainer. Uh, uh, read the comment by Rainer on React to it. Uh, okay, so about typefaces, when I teach type now, I avoid canonization because I believe that's not necessary anymore. My students don't need to know even or whatever. I mean, uh, okay, that's a nice point, but you know, they come with uh, Helvetica and they come with Newe Has and they come with uh, uh, GT America and they come with all these typefaces that are sort of Helvetica, that, but they don't want to use Helvetica you know, because they want to use something new. And then I have to talk about Helvetica and then I need to tell them about Helvetica and accident grotesque. And then, you know, so it's not that I'm telling them, hey, stop everything. You need to know about the universe. No, it's when it comes to the conversation when I'm teaching them, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. because yeah. they are using Helvetica massively, honestly. I mean, Helvetica seems to be the solution to all the problems, you know. Because if it's a trend in design, they are looking at trends in design. So they are copying trends, you know? What I'm trying to tell them is at least if you want to use something that is like uh, Alvetica, you have to tell me why Alvetica, you know? Yes. And why not Futura? Oh. And I put in them in this situation, why Alvetica and not Futura, for instance, something very different, you know? And the most of the time they don't know. They are using Helvetica because the, a lot of people are using Helvetica, you know. You smack them. I also smack them. I always, I was telling them, don't use Helvetica. There's no sense to use Helvetica, you know. I mean, Helvetica, I mean, Helvetica, so the new versions of Helvetica are much better. This is what I'm telling first, you know. But also is this thing with the students, they hardly buy typefaces. Now I make a huge effort uh, showing them <coughs> when fonts are like, license free or trial fonts or font stand, etc. I'm really pushing them not to go to pilot fonts and you know mm -hmm. but you know they have this always excuse because they have we have no money and say oh, come on type is not expensive. I'm always trying to explain them what is behind that. Yeah. And they understand but they say ah oh, we have no money and then that's a huge problem because they all of them end up with the same typefaces, you know? And say, why are you working with the same typeface of the guy that is using the same typeface because he's in the server of the, of the class, you know? <laughs> so I'm really pushing them to open their minds to many, much yeah. more typefaces, you know? So I don't know if Reiner, when you say that, is what you mean. Of course, it's not that I'm telling them, okay, Helvetica, or like, you know. <laughs> and just because it happens, I need to talk to Helvetica because it happens. Yeah. Okay, the next question is yes. about the, yeah, so, can do. This is an, another, another uh, let's say, breaking point in my last years. I mean, this project was uh, also a before and after for me because I never had the opportunity to work in a multi-script project. Mm -hmm. and, and then doing it in the, in the other way around, like uh, doing Latin from Arabic, that it was you, a huge could you, challenge. Uh, could, you, could you share your screen with uh, an image of the typeface? Of you, you must, yeah, yeah, please, yeah. Just a name or a PDF you have or something like that, just to, uh, to yeah. Yeah, I will. 
uh, to find be less abstract for people uh, if they have to watch uh, that later. I mean, the inputs, the inputs of Kandula are many, many, many. We're also in uh, traveling to to the region of the writing in this case, Tina. So we went to Morocco, we went to Marrakech, and we were working on film, let's say, no? And this was extremely important. And it was the first time I met the designers I was working with. I mean, I met Christian Sarkis the first time in, in, in Marrakech. So we were going to be at, at, at but I, I didn't know that, I didn't know who was Christian Sarkis, you know, let's say. And, and it had a huge influence on me because I learned about Arabic type design through a person who has very strong opinions about what, has, what Arabic type design has to be, you know? Because Arabic has huge origin in calligraphy and in writing. And you probably know because of the influence of colonial, the first typefaces, Arabic typefaces that we have in metal types were done by non-Arabic people. So, and, and they lost all the fluency and organic thing that Arabic writing has. So, because they translated something that is calligraphic into metal types with the technology that it was available. It was like uh, breaking all the things that were really into, into Arabic letters, you know? So this is the first thing that I learned and I had no idea. <laughs> you know? So how to look at the Arabic typefaces, considering the history of the writing, you know? Yeah. yeah. And okay, I'm looking for, you know, I'm distracted, sorry. Um, I'm looking for an image. Um, okay, yeah. Let me look for something that is, um, something that is, I can browse a little bit. Yeah, okay, I will open this. Okay, so I'm going to share this. Can you see the this screen? Yes, you see it now, right? Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just to have that so, few minutes to, uh, to refer to the typeface. Yes, yes, thank you. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, wait, now this is open in a different way. Okay. Yeah. So this is uh, the Candus, and you see Arabic on top. This is the Latin, and this is Tifina. So we're working with, with uh, these uh, manuscripts from al Kandusi. So the origin of the Arabic is, man is manuscripts, Arabic manuscripts by al Kandusi. So Christian was the first one drawing, let's say. So he was the one who put, let's say, the translation uh, from calligraphy into typographic shapes as a starting point. So this was one of the starting points. So actually, this, what you see here in the bottom, this Arabic, this part of Arabic, it was the starting point of the project. Was, and, and then what I did was to imitate the uh, Latin calligraphy with Arabic tools. Arabic calligraphic tools, because Arabic includes rotation. So this was the first time I was included in the idea of rotation, because till then I was only training translation and expansion, <laughs> my heritage in calligraphy from type of media, you know, working with the broad technique pen and the pointed pen. And then here I introduced rotation in the concept, you know. Also having in mind that the, the, the contours in Arabic is uh, reverse. But as you can see in the Latin, it's not reverse contrast. It's something completely different. Uh, so here, the, the, for me, it was extremely influenced to see the vernacular lettering on a spot. It was the first trip in Marrakech. It was mostly based on Arabic and Tifinec. And then the second trip was in the south of Spain, in Granada and Cordoba. And then in Granada, where we could see the influence of Arabic in the Latin, in Latin alphabet. Because in Cordoba, especially in, no, mostly in Granada, people in shops, etc., are using uh, these Latin letters influenced by Arabic, but in the in the funny way, let's say, you know, in this, and in a very let's say anecdotic way. 
but could, I could, could say something, could, uh, excuse me to interrupt you, uh, Laura. Could you say something on the way that you refer to um, to the way you you learn um, Arabic um, or to be influenced by Arabic? But does this was back and worst? I mean, uh, does it mean that some design decision you made after you follow Arabic was was used? to correct something because you are not able to achieve that in Latin. So you have to discuss uh, with, uh, with a Christian yep. to ask him to yes. adapt certain things to make. So what was the discussion between both of you? Mm. He started, you followed him, and then you come back to him with some suggestion, maybe some detail, something like that. Yeah. So that maybe the it question was, yeah, it was a parallel, it was a, a, a parallel uh, process because, I mean, he had, we had the starting point of uh, the Arabic to, to understand how uh, Arabic type works, meaning that, okay, this coming from a manuscript. So we had three, man we selected three manuscripts from Ankh Dusi, something that was more for the regular, something for the medium and something for the more expressive, the dark one. But then we started working on the regular, you know, to understand the structure and et cetera. And then what I did was not following the Arabic writing. What I did was to try to put myself in the brain of al Kandusi <laughs> on the calligrapher and trying to understand how he, how he could do Latin shapes, you know? And yeah, this is yeah. why... I imitate, I took the tools from Arabic calligraphy to do Latin calligraphy, following the instructions of Christian, how calligraphy. Uh, so from the beginning, I was sketching only Latin, but having mm -hmm. in mind how Arabic calligraphy works. And yes. I, it gave me amazing shapes, shapes that I could never do by sketching letters without the calligraphy again. <laughs> Even though it doesn't look calligraphic because you see these shapes and okay, okay, it's clear that there's no calligraphy here. Actually, I have more images. I can change the, the I can change the, okay, wait, yeah. So here you have the Arabic, how it's built, and some characters, and here you have the Latin. So when you look at these shapes, for instance, also because it's something very important, this is a sort of a right italic because Arabic is connected. So the only, it's, it's a cursive, it's cursive writing. So the only way to imitate or approach a little bit this was to have uh, Italic constructions, but at right. So this had a huge influence in, in the way of constructing the, the serifs. So you see, for instance, this letter, letter L, you only have one serif on the left and one serif on the right, imitating the calligraphic shape. You know, so what I did was to have the influence of Arabic, but trying not to pers look uh, lose personality in, in in the Latin shapes. So this is the approach of Candus okay. for the Latin. You know, so okay, let's do Latin because it's Latin. Don't lose the 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 soul of a Latin alphabet. But mm -hmm. try to put yourself in the innov in innovation that uh, Al Kandusi, the calligrapher, was doing with his own shapes, and it was extremely hard but extremely rewarding, you know, because at the beginning I had to work in a sort of normal alphabet, and I reached this after eleven alphabets. You know, this is a process. It's not that I got these shapes from the beginning. Yeah. It was an evolution in shapes. And, and then I had also some, I look at the similitate types and I was imitating some calligraphic uh, shapes of uh, the, the Latin calligraphy that is based on rotation, you know, mm -hmm. like the manieris, because I thought, why not to look at the manuscripts in Latin, you know, and, and it was really interesting. So here you see on the side, on the left, you have the Tifinac and on the right, you have the Arabic. And here you have this, the blue spots that is based on Latin, and then the red ones are the Arabic, the Arabic base. So for instance, this sort of hook, they could be Arabic. Because if you look at the shape, Arabic starts from the right on top, and then it goes to the left, you know? 
So it's, it's a bit different. And then when I found this shape, closing this shape of the A because of the rotation, then is when Christian put these closed shapes in the Arabic, but mm -hmm. only later, you know? So yeah. we were, uh, and then Tifina was in the middle, like taking things from one place and the other, but mostly of the Latin, of course. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if I answered your question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. So we have uh, the last two questions <clears throat> because we are here since already almost two hours. So maybe yeah. <laughs> we need, uh, people have to, some people have to work again because they are on the other part of the Atlantic. Uh, yeah. From Mexico, from US, on some people in Europe maybe. There is already two people say yes, they have to, to, to have their duty. Yeah. So we need to, to, to going on on the last two questions. So okay. the, the, uh, the last, the, one of the um, one of the questions they asked. Maybe you can stop to share your screen to go back to yeah. the initial mm -hmm. discussion. So about uh, the marathon thing, the physical resistance or the intellectual resistance. <laughs> yeah. uh, when you start yeah. a project, uh, you have to end up at some point or not. On the moment you have to stop it and to come back to it or to decide to uh, give up or not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Could you say something? Uh, you yeah, I think it's um, uh, yeah, I think it's uh, you have to be super disciplined. Is for me, for instance, I don't work on type if I can only put one hour. Yeah. I mean, I I need to be sure that I have uh, three hours in front of me, because when you take some decisions on something, it might influence other other letters. And then yes. if you are in the middle of, of the process of taking decisions like this, you cannot do it in one hour because you need to try this sort of decision in another characters and then yeah. take the decision if it is something that is going to work. So you need time for reflection. This is what I'm trying to say. It's not like only about drawing. You also need to be all the time confronting yourself if this is the right decision or not and this is the good shape. Thinking about and you need this. to print and yeah and you need to print and you need to see this uh, how it looks like so you need to have you need to have a lot of passion you need to be really in love with the, what you are doing sometimes it happens that when you have a commission work and it's not your type face i mean <laughs> and i mean you are drawing based on a briefing and you need to find the point where you fall in love with that you know and yeah by this meaning trying to work on this on, on the best time of the day yeah when is your best time for the day because if you are working on a commission project that is something that is not super exciting and you're doing it when you are tired or when you are worried about something else it's very difficult it's even more difficult so if i'm working on a commission project i put the best of, of my day there the best hours of my day on that project you know because then I, and then I enjoy it because I'm fresh and not tired, you know, but you need to know yourself. You need to know yourself, which is your, you know, uh, how is yeah. your best time, you know, but yeah. when you are working on your, on your own project, it's completely different, but it's also as part of the, of the, of the question, you know, it's about what is the, the, the advice you will give to, to future designers. I think for me, the most, uh, what is really inspiring for me, for myself, it's challenging for myself, is to do something I never did before. Yes. Even if it's learning something related to technology, to software, you know? Even if, it, if your learning is not, your shapes are not going to be super different, but you learn to do something in a way, you know? Uh, be, being better with the software or something, something that challenges you. And for me, it's super important to feel emotions with uh, your shapes. Like, okay, you are look, designing something and you say, oh, this is beautiful. Oh, this is really great. Look at this, you know, and to yourself, eh? telling to yourself. And of course, yeah, yeah. you have a, someone to show, <laughs> to share is much better, you know. But for me, it's very important to feel uh, passionate about what you are doing. I mean, I know it's very normal to say that and very common, but it's so true with type. You know, it's so true because you can't spend three hours with your nest, you know, 
<laughs> and you really need to be passionate. I mean, a type design is is a, is something that not. I mean, you, everybody can learn it. I would say because there's a methodology. But then people who stay there are people who are really in love with it, yeah. with the discipline. And I think that is even more than than graphic design in general. And when you see, for instance, to like congresses, you know, and you meet the community, it's not the same a congress of type design that a congress of graphic design, you know. Uh, and it's not me saying that. It's I have the opportunity to have graphic designers in type congresses, and they are super surprised about how nice is, is the atmosphere where everybody is, knows each other, you know, and, and this feeling of uh, people sh sharing knowledge, you know, is super interesting. Yeah. In graphic design is not so common. It's not so common, maybe because the community is bigger and then it's more difficult. But in, yeah. in type design, there's a lot of sharing and a lot of uh, common things among people in a way of thinking, you know, also. Mm. Even about, probably about life, <laughs> you know. I don't know, I'm a very romantic person and I want to think that, uh, you know, type design is something you do because of love, you know. And, but I feel it like this. I feel it like this, you know, it's my passion. So, and I'm very grateful that I can put my, in my job is my passion, you know. I think, yeah. and this is happening to all the type designers I know. And, I'm sure and this is very interesting. Also. Musician, graphic designer, uh, yeah. uh, food lover. Of yes, course, uh, of course. Who love what, what they're doing. Yes, yes. Even the people who make love, love. Yeah, yes, what yes. <laughs> yeah absolutely. I mean, it's a, uh, I think it's a, uh, I don't know. I think it's, uh, for me, with years, I see it very clear. Sometimes now with all the, these years behind me, I think that I wonder if I will be able to keep on working like this because it's also very intense, you know? It's very intense. I mean, you also have to take care of yourself. You have to be in good shape. This is also very important. You know, you have to take care of yourself a lot. The way oh. you eat, the way you sit, everything. Spend yeah, yeah. tons let, of let, hours in a chair. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's very important. You need to take care of yourself. Yeah. There's one last question. It's about the Instagram thing. You want to make this question? No, it's not about Instagram. I don't care about Instagram. I, I hate No, it's about the science. It's about the photos. Let's burn Instagram. Let's give the COVID to Instagram, definitely to kill Instagram. Yes. Um, no, no, the question is more about uh, the photo you take. Okay, you share some yeah. photo on Instagram, but we don't care about Instagram. Let's, let's yeah, 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 I understand. The photo, the photo you take and all this photo you take uh, influence your work on, in, in both. Uh, in both. Yeah. 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 I, I mean, I'm not doing typefaces that are directly related to the letterings I collect in photos, I mean, not like this, it could be, it could be, there's a lot of letterings I discovered that could be typefaces, and it's a super nice exercise, but I mean, I have them in my brain somehow, you know, I have this, uh, all these images in my brain, and they are there, you know, because for me, the vernacular, heritage is as important as historic heritage. I think vernacular letters say a lot about the society, about the place you live. So when we were looking, talking about local before, you know, and there's a, 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 a very local way of doing a vernacular lettering, you know, and I think that it shows a idiosyncrasy of the country, identity of the country, identity of people who do this. When I had the opportunity to meet one let sign painter in Mexico, it was extremely amazing because he's, he was a specialist in painting taxis <laughs> because in Mexico they, they paint, the cars have uh, mostly Gothic letters. And I was in his workshop in Mexico, in Ciudad de Mexico. And it was incredible because he had this, uh, I wanted to know which were his influences where he copies the letters. And then he showed me his uh, lettering books, photocopies of 
for God the Father, things taken from other people. And it was extremely beautiful because what he is doing is taking vernaculars to do his own work, you know. And because of this influence, because of this influence, he could do his job. So thanks to vernacular letters, you know. So for, this is why I'm saying that it, for me it's as important vernacular as historical because it has a lot of expression, also shows a lot of technique. I mean, when you see some painting, it's super, super interesting to see some painting, how they are doing in, in other places. So when I see letters that really, I like them, I mean, I'm not taking photos of everything. I'm only taking photos of things I really, I really like. I really like taking something. So, yeah. He, uh, yeah, Jean, Jean Baptiste, uh, Jean Francois put the safari tipo. Yeah, I don't know if you saw it. It was very nice. Yeah, look at this. <laughs> this is from Chile. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nice. super nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These things are super interesting. Now, for instance, Cecilia in in our in our workshop, he's doing a typeface that is much based on the vernacular Mexican typefaces, mm -hmm. and she's doing a great thing to put this in a contemporary graphic design project. So I think vernacular is extremely important. For me, it uh, has a lot of influence. And probably it's not especially in the typefaces I design, but in the shapes. So I think I put my vernacular heritage in the shapes I draw. I okay, thank you. Uh, does someone have a last question to ask in addition to uh, this discussion? or? or not, or a precision about something? Um, <laughs> John, Raphael, Masiek, Cecilia, yeah. hello, Cecilia. Alice. John has one. John, John has one. John, you have one? Yes. Yep. Open your microphone. Yeah. Oh, OK. Uh, yeah. Is it still available in English, how to create a faces? Yeah. And, but you can, ask, you can only get it through the same bright library. Elena and Manuel, who are the editors of Tipo E, they decided to stop the Amazon thing. Amazon thing, they decided to stop it. At the beginning, they thought it was a good idea because it could reach everybody. But later, it was, uh, it was not good. And they decided to put all the books to distribution through St. Bright Library. So, so, so I, can, go, I can order it. I can order it from them. Yes. Or, OK. Yeah, I, yeah, lost, I, lo I, I lost my copy. <laughs> I don't know how it's going to be the, with the COVID thing. Probably yeah, yeah. it will okay. be slower than usual. Okay. But as far as I know, in the United Kingdom, they still have the post working pretty well. Okay. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Where are you located? Where are you? Uh, Madrid, in Spain. So. Ah, you're in Madrid. Ah, you're yeah. in Madrid. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I think it will be, it will be okay. Okay. For you. It will, I think you will get it from Madrid for sure. Okay. But you know Manuel is in Madrid, right? Manuel Sesma? Ah, didn't. I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay, so Manuel, the editor, is in Madrid. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll, I can contact him then. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Right. But he will send you to sign bright anyway because oh, okay. right. sad, sadly the Spanish version is, so, is, is sold out. We don't have a Spanish uh, version available anymore. Okay. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Okay, so, so uh, someone asked about it's in Bright Library, so yeah, that's the place to get the copy of the English yeah. edition. So, um, uh, Laura, um, thank yeah. you for your time. Thank you uh, to uh, to be with us uh, for a couple of hours uh, together. Mm -hmm. It was um, thank you. It's never easy to accept such kind of uh, discussion. It's something uh, new. It's what you say, uh, answering the first question, saying that uh, these um, um, co coronavirus thing uh, on the confinement uh, push us to do things in different way. So this yeah. kind of discussion, it's completely different way to exchange about design, uh, to listen people in a more comfy hmm. atmosphere, um, confined atmosphere actually, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's quite different from a, from a scene on with people uh, in the audience watching people do a presentation. It's a completely different way to discuss about yeah. things, but it's also very interesting. 
because we go more deeper into uh, emotion, as you, as, you yeah, as you described before, the way you have the, the soul you have inside of you to, to, to do things. Mm -hmm. So you, 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 your discussion was about that. A lot, a lot of, of your reference were about uh, humanity, how to be uh, with design, how, how to, to, to live with, with this kind of things, the shape of letter forms, how to live with them, how to, to do that along the year, along the day, all the time, always, always, always. On to make your life uh, better with the thing you love. So um, yeah. it's something. I have a question uh, for. I have a question. Eh? I have a question. I want. I would like to ask to Cecilia and Francisco this thing that uh, about the influence. I may have on them. I am really, really interested in 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 knowing uh, if uh, they think I had I, an influence on them. <laughs> uh, can you hear me? I'm, yes. Hola. Okay. Hi, Laura. So I was not ready to speak, but uh, I think I can say a few words. Um, of course, uh, yeah, it was a great experience to, to oh. have you as a teacher. And I think uh, after, I don't know, two, three years working in the a little bit in the type design industry, oh. uh, I think I share uh, a lot of... Uh, um, I share the way of uh, the same way of thinking uh, hmm. you were you were explaining on the conversation. So I think I'm a slow designer also. So I, mm -hmm. I, I I'm not in a rush to release a typeface. Uh, actually, I'm just working for other people, and I feel uh, I have time to do it. So I'm more into the quality there yeah. in the quantity. Hmm. So. Yeah, that's it. I think uh, that's something I, maybe I learned from you and from other people. <laughs> yeah. uh, and for me, th that's really uh, very, very important. One of the, uh, like, I think my, the way I work is very related to that way of thinking. Yeah, okay. Okay. very nice. <laughs> yeah. and I'm I very happy we, about this. Yeah, I hope uh, we can meet very soon. I was in Barcelona. Uh, when everything started, uh, I was working mm -hmm. uh, in uh, within Eco. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, I was just going to the studio and going back home, uh, so I didn't contact anyone. Yeah, but, yeah. But I well, hope hopefully is this year in November this uh, encontros uh, ah, yeah, photography. Yeah, yeah. I mean. Honestly, when, I, when we are free again, yeah. <laughs> I will run somewhere <laughs> as soon as it's possible, you know. I, I need to yeah. get out of uh, this space. But I think, I mean, it will be very special. The first typographic event that we can all join yeah, in, in sure. real, it will be amazing. And maybe, maybe, not, maybe, maybe November. Maybe Tipai, maybe yeah, don't no, know, right? No, Itipai is, is not going to happen. We, yeah. you will have, are you a member? Are yeah. You, um, so you will yeah. have an, you have an email from okay. HIPI. So uh, Paris is postponed for next year. Is the, and we are going virtual. We are going to, but it's not like copying the physical event. It's something else. It's something different. Yeah. So we are going to do an event in virtual, keeping the same dates. And yeah, Paris goes busy. for 2021. It's the most, okay. uh, I think it's, it's, it was too risky to, because it's an international event and people yeah. come from everywhere. So it's, uh, it was too risky. But if the one in Portugal is happening in yeah, November, I so. because, I mean, probably you could go, you will go inside Portugal. Um, cool. I don't know how, how anything is going to be, but if we can travel in November.